Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem. Welcome back to today's Daf. Meseches Erech and Daf Chaf Vav. We begin six lines from the top. Rabbi the Ezra. Loi nichnasen, loi nesen v'chulu. We're speaking about a fellow who donated a family plot, a field, to the Beis Hamikdash, to the Bedek Habayis Fund, and the halacha is that by this type of situation, when a person's magdash is steyachuza, right, a family plot, a personal plot, as opposed to something that he bought from somebody, so it's his own family property, there's a choice in the matter. You can either leave it in hegdash proper. Or he can redeem it. Now, if he redeems it, he buys it back soon enough, uh, you know, before the uh, the Yevil arrives, then it's uh, back uh, it's back home. It uh, returns to his family, it reverts to uh, the status of Steachuza. It stays by him, you know, uh, for, for long term. However, if he fails to exercise that buyback option, what happens then? So, Yevil arrives. We have one opinion in the Mishnah. That's uh, Rabbi Shimon's opinion, who says that uh, the, the Kihanim, the Kihanim who are serving in the Mishmar, in the rotation when uh, Yevil, you know, enters, they get the field. It is divided amongst those Kihanim. They get it without pay. Rabbi Yud holds, they get it with pay. They have to pay for it, and then they get it. Rabbi Leza says, no. Unless somebody actually comes and redeems the field from the Hegdish, if it's just left as is and Yevil arrives, it stays here. So Kayan will not uh, access the field unless somebody else goes, redeems it, even a Kayan, but somebody goes and buys it back from the Hegdish completely, uh, you know, before the, the Yevil arrives. And then when Yevil arrives, it's taken away from that person and distributed to the Kayan. So in a case where Yevil had arrived, Veloyni Gala hadn't yet been brought back from Hegdish. No redemption had occurred. Rabbi Leza says, Loy nechnosen, Veloy noisen, the Kehanim do not enter the field, um, not with pay, not without pay. El anikris shad retushin, we give it a label. It's called an abandoned field. And if it sits until the next Yevil, once again, repeats itself. We uh, label it as a doubly abandoned field. Basically, it stays there until somebody comes along, buys it from Hegdish, and subsequently, when Yevil arrives, he will let go of the field and give it to the Kayan. Says the Gemara, what's your blessed source that the, the field will never go to the Kayan unless somebody first bought it, bought it back from Hegdish? My time is a blessed. Omar Rava, Omar Rabba. My time there, Belaza. Omar Kra. Vimloy Yigoyelas Asada. So let's just read the Pasuk inside. If you have it on the margin, it's very helpful. Vimloy Yigoyelas Asada. So if the donor, let's call him Ruven, fails to buy back his field. And the Pasuk continues. Vimachar Asada Lish Acher. Rather, the treasurer, right, the Hegdish, you know, administrator, sold the field to a stranger, to another person. Loy Yigoyel Oy, they can no longer be redeemed by the original owner. It's already sold. And the Pasuk continues. What happens? Right? It's given to the Kayan, it's like his personal plot, it's given to him for keeps. So, going to Rabbah, we sort of rearrange the Pasik and learn it like this. And we skip the next few words, so the donor, Reuven, did not buy it back. He cannot redeem it any longer. And then we go back. If, rather, if the Gizbar sold the field, so it was actually taken away from Hegdash by another person, and now the Yevil uh, Kayhanim distribution system will, will kick in. So, so clearly, the idea of distributing to Kayanim only follows a Geula by that stranger. If it was bought back, then to the Kayanim. But otherwise, if it was still sitting by Hegdash, 
all along without any buyer back, <laughs> it will never go to the Kayana. Amr Abai, how do you dissect the Pasuk and you know, there's this rearrangement of the words? Sakina <laughs> Kharifa, it's like you have a sharp knife, Mafsaka Kroy, which cuts up the Pasuk. The Pasuk doesn't read like that. The Pasuk says, you know, he didn't buy it back, he can't do it anymore, and it goes to the Kayan. Which sounds like, uh, well, even if nobody bought it back, it goes to the Kayan. So, what then is Rebeleza's reason? El Amr Abaye, time to Rebbe Yezer It's based on the following price. So back to this pasuk where it says, Ruvain, the donor, failed to buy it back. Lo Yigayel Oid. Okay, so Lo Yigayel perhaps means Yochel Lo Yitehei Nigeles. Shtelefonok Stei Mikne. So perhaps, l- let's say, donor, right? Mr. Ruvain wants to buy it back. Could he at all buy it back? I understand he can't get it back the way it was. It's not anymore stay It's not going to stay by him. Past evil. But could he just buy it back for the time being? Like a stay mikna? Rashi says, uh, like another person who buys it back. Stay mikna is a term referring to a field that you bought. That wasn't a family plot. Just have it, you know, temporary until evil. So, just like... Shimon, a stranger, can go buy it out of Hegdish and hold on to it until Yevil. Perhaps Ruben could do the same. Maybe he can't. Is that true that he can't? Tamalimar? Of course he could. He can't have it back the way it was. But you could buy it just like anybody else could buy it and have it until Yevil. Tamalimar? Oid. Loyigayel? Oid. Can't be redeemed the way it was. You can't have it back as before. For all time. But you can have it until Yevil and then goes to the Kayanim. It can be redeemed and re- restored to its former status. To have it back as a family plot. No, you're off title. That's it. Okay, but you can still have it. Like a stay mikna in a limited sense. So even the Donor, he failed to exercise his option. We'll see in a minute exactly what we're talking. But for some reason, he didn't. He didn't, he's not going to have it back as a stay. Oh, so he can still have it back as a stay. Mikna, you know, worse than anybody else in the street. You can buy it and have it until Yevil. Now, Amos. Okay, so that's the end of the price. So let's analyze. What's the what's the time frame we're talking about? Ruben donated the field. He wants to buy it back. Where are we standing vis-a-vis Yevil? Is it before? Is it after? Amos. Elaine will be able to reach. Are we speaking still within the first? time frame until the first Yevil arrives. What do you mean? Why can't he just buy it back and have it as a Steachuza? Revert back to its earlier status. Am I in a Nigelis? Steachuza nami have you. Of course, if Ruben buys it back, he's the donor. He returns as the full-fledged owner. Steachuza, he holds it permanently now. Steachuza nami have you. Oh, apparently we're speaking it's after the Yevil passed. It's in the second Yevil now. So he was Magdisha today, 10 years later come Yevil, he hadn't touched it yet. Then after that Yevil, between that and the next Yevil, he's coming to buy it back. On that, the Bryce says, look, you've lost your opportunity. You can't revert as a stay, as a stay Achuza owner. You can't return to that status. It's over. But you can buy it back at least like a stay Mikna, like anybody else can buy it now and hold on to it until the next Yevil, where it's given to the Kayhana. Now, Whose opinion? Who's speaking in this price? Ulaman. Even with Rabbi Yudav, Rabbi is going like those sheetahs, the Kahanam Nafka. There is no uh, second Yevil to speak of. Once the first Yevil arrives, doom, goes to the Kahanam. A lover of Eliezer. Oh, must be Eliezer speaking. That the Kahanam only receive it once somebody was paid it. Ruben donated it. It sat around, nobody touched it till Yevil. It stays in Hektish. Proper. After that, Yevil comes around and says, you know, I don't, I don't want to redeem it. So he can do so, in a limited sense. He can have it back until the next Yevil, when it goes to the Kayanam. Ushma mino. Time to the Clearly, we have a, a source of a lezer. Kayanam only get it after there was a redemption process. Says the Gemara, how could you suggest this? It's based on an extra word in the Pasuk, the, the word oid, right? So... If this is merely Rabbi Yehuda speaking, what are Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shimon going to do with that pasuk? Vitisper Rabbi Yehuda, 
Rebbe Shimon, how you eat my my darn sheep? What do they do with the oid? Ella rather says the Gemara. Actually, we're speaking about an entirely different case, and it's not going to provide a source for Beliezer's Allah. Ella hocha be my skin. Rather, we're speaking as follows. Besod shiyotzel kaihan. What happened was the field did go to the Kayhan. Rashi explains. Ruben donated it. Shimon redeemed it. And then come Yevil, he let go, went to the Kayhan. A standard case. So now the former owner, Ruben, the donor, is off title. He went to the Kayhan. It's now their plot. That's it. What happened was we're not done. Vigdisha Kayin. The Kayin decided, you know what? Hmm, I want to give it back to Hektish. Okay, so now it's back to Hektish. Vosu Balum Lemifrika. The original owner, Ruben the donor, decided, oh, it's back on the mark. Let me go uh, and, and uh, buy it out of Hektish. So perhaps you can say, look, you lost your uh, chance. You had an opportunity. You didn't. Too late. You can't get it back at all. Sakhat Dachman is room to think. Lloyd Tifrik. He can't redeem it even in a limited sense. To have a limited ownership. To have it at least until you have it. Maybe you can't. It's too late. I'm a Comes the puzzle and says, you know what? You can't have it the way it was. It's not restored to its former status. Look at my show. He said, Nigel, it's not redeemed to the way it was. Avon Nigel, but you can redeem it in a limited sense. To have it until you have it. And that's what the Bryce is talking about. So again, we're speaking, Ruben donated. Somebody else bought in the meantime. Come Yevil went to the Kayhanim, who donated it. And Reuben comes back and buys it out of Hegdish. That works. He has it until Yevil. And likewise, we find the same concept in the next price. Same concept, but a little different variation. A couple of more steps, but the same idea. That once it goes to the Kayhanim, Reuben is off title. And now the opportunity arises for him to regain it, to rebuy it. Yeah, but like anybody else can buy it. You have no special, you know, privileged uh, status on this field. Vatani, as we find the following price, we're going to get a different puzzle. So Rashi explains here we're speaking about a person who was Magdash Aste Mikna. It wasn't his family plot, it was something that he bought, he was Magdashit. And then somebody bought it out of Hagdish. So come Yevil. The, the, the field is restored. To the other uh, person you bought it from, the seller, who's the real owner. So, what exactly does this mean? Yochel yachsor le gizbo shil kachem imenu. Ruben donated the field. Sorry, Ruben sold it. Okay, again, Ruben sold it to Shimon. Shimon was Magdish. And Levi bought it from the Hegdish. Comes the Evil, goes back to who? You would think maybe to the Gizbar, to the administrator, the one who I bought it from. Yochel Yachso the Gizbar, Shlachim Imenu, Tamalema, no. It goes back to the original owner. Tamalema, Ashalech, Huzah So it goes back to, uh, to Reuben. Right? Because Reuben had sold the field to Shimon, who turned around and was Magdashit. He could only be Magdashit in a limited sense, in as much as he owns it. He only owns it until Yevil. Fine, so it's Hegdash until Yevil. But now, after it became Hegdash, Levi came and bought it from the Hegdash. Comes Yevil. He doesn't give it back to Hegdash, because it really belongs to Reuben. It was only sold until Yevil. So anything that happened, anything that transpired, the sale, the Hegdash, the resale, was only a limited type of transaction which only lasts until Yevil comes Yevil goes back to Ruben and the question is why can't the Pasuk simply say just this phrase go back to Achuzah Sa'aretz to Ruben Yoimar should simply say La Sholei Achuzah Sa'aretz to tell you that the uh, field goes back to Ruben why does the Pasuk add to the one he bought it from it's pretty much like a repetition it's a redundancy I mean it's both referring to the original owner the answer is it's covering another case as well which relates to our former discussion What happened was like this. Soda Shiyotzal Kayhanim. 
was speaking that Reuven donated the field. Okay. Eventually, it came, it came Yevil, and it went to the Kehanim because somebody bought it in between. Went back to the uh, come Yevil went back to the Hegdish to the Kehanim. Okay. For example, say so again, Reuven donated. He failed to buy it back. For for example, let's say somebody else bought it out of the Hegdish. Then, now it's Yoivu, it goes to the Kayan. So again, Soda, Shiyotso, the Kayanim, it was distributed to the Kayan. The Kayan got his part, says, oh great, I want to sell it. But right now, let's just stop for a second. Once it gets to the Kayanim, as we learned before, the former owner, Reuben, is off title. It was now converted into Kayan property. It was transformed into Kayan possession, Kayan plot, Kayan estate. Okay? So we're going to see how this price is pretty much in line with the previous price. Same concept, but here it's a more complex case with more, more, more steps along the way. More things happened. But ultimately, it's the same, based on the same, it's rooted on the same concept. That once the field ends up in the Kayhanim's hands, the former owner, Mr. Rune, who donated the field, is off title. So Machra Kayhan, the Kayhan who got it, sold it. The one he sold it to was Magdashit. Okay, it's getting all complicated. But same idea. He got it. He sold it. It's Magdashit. We go to Acher. Comes yet another person that takes it out of the Hegdish, buys it out of the Hegdish. Yochel Tassel Vailon Roshon. So perhaps, come Yevil. Okay, you let go, right? Who does it go back to? The Kayin? Who had it and sold it and then, right? Or that maybe goes back to uh, Ruben, the original owner. Tam Aloyma comes to the Pasuk and says, La Sherka, no. Goes back to the person he bought it from. In this case, the Kayin. Right? Because the Kayin had it from the Hegdish. Sold it. The person bought it from him. It was Magdash. It was very nice. But he only had limited ownership on it until Yevil. So now when somebody bought it out of the Hegdish, comes Yevil, goes back to the Kayin who sold it. As opposed to the former owner, Ruben, who was Magdash to begin with. So it's very similar to the previous case. It's just here we have additional steps along the way. But the concept is the same. Here we have a case, again, where Ruben, the owner, was Magdash. Yevil went to the Kayhanim. The Kayin took it. So now Ruben's off title. He took it, sold it. The fellow who bought it was Magdashit. Another person redeemed it from the Hegdash. Comes Yevil, goes back to the coin. Not, right? Rather than to the original owner, who's off title. And this is very similar to the previous case where we had a fellow. Ruven was Magdash. Ultimately, he went to the Kayhan and Yevil. The coin was Magdashit, so he, wasn't, he didn't sell it. And then he was Magdashit. And Ruven decides to buy it out of Hegdash. He's off title. He's like a stranger. Who wants to buy out of Hegdish, you can have it until Yevo, not past that point. And again, the concept is because he's off title, once it was given to the Kayan. Okay, says the Gemara, now why do we need this repetition? I mean, why do we need this case and the other case? Israel and we need both, both cases. Israel and Mikhtav. We need the, the first Pasuk to tell you that. Ruben is off title, he can't have it back as a stay achuza. And we need a second pasuk to tell you the similar concept that this fellow now bought it from the Hegdish, if it was so, after it was sold by the Kayin, has to give it back to the Kayin, rather than the original owner. Which is based on the same premise, that the original owner is off the table. Why do we need this repetition? Isn't it pretty much a redundancy? Says the Gemara, no, there's an element in each case which has to be highlighted. Because of Rechman if only from that first Pasuk, the Leica Hydro Cloud would say, yeah, Ruben doesn't get it because it's not going back to anybody. Right? What happened was that Ruben was Magdish. Yevil went to the Kayhanim. And uh, the Kayin was Magdishit. Okay, what happens now? So, if somebody comes and takes it out of the Hegdish, okay, come Yevil goes to the Kayanim. Doesn't go back to the Kayin who was Magdashit. Right? 
So there, it's not slated for return to the owner. So I understand that it doesn't go back to Ruvain either. But in this recent case, where it's going back to somebody, Ruvain was Magdish. It went to the Kayana. The Kayan took it and sold it. His buyer was Magdish. And then somebody redeemed it. It's going back. Yoibel, it's going back to the Kayan. Because he only sold it. He's entitled to have it back, Yoibel. It's going back. Anyways, so perhaps it should go back to the real, to the original owner. It's going back anyways. May as well go back to the real, to the original owner. Ruben, the donor. No. To emphasize it goes to the Kayan. The person you bought it from. Because Ruben is off, off title. So that's a Chiddush, right? Because Rahman Asher Kano, on the other end of the Pasuk, only mentioned this case, where it goes to the Kayin rather than the Bailam, the original, you know, Ruvein. I understand, like, you have a Bailam Dmei, because the owner's not offering any money. He wants it back free of... Avalach and the Kayin Dmei, but in the first case, again, let's refresh, what's the first case? Talking about Ruvein, the donor, failed to buy it back, was given to the Kayin. Now he's coming to buy it back. After the coin was marked, the shift. So he's paying for it. So maybe he's paying. Give it to him. Take him by a die. Let, let them have it the way they had it before. As a stay achuza permanently. Because Rachman let you go. No. You can have it, but until you're able. No, you know better than anybody else. Now, there's the, that, that word oid we had before. Let you go. Oid. What's that for? Because Rachman let you go. Torah only say the word let you go. Because of oid. Without adding the word oid. I mean, I would say like Tipper Klau. Maybe actually. He lost his chance. He can't even redeem it at all, even for a temporary hold. Mind he failed to take it back. It was given to Kayan too late. Because Rachman wait. Comes the puzzle and says, Oit, you can't have it the way you had it before. But you could have it in a limited sense, like anybody else would have it now. The Kumay Shahisen, Nigel, it's coming redeemed to the way it was before. It can't revert to Steyach, who's a status. Avon Nigel's telephone of Steymikni. You can have it back as a Steymikni. You can have it until Yavo. So, bottom line, we have three, the Yukum, three Psukim. Each one hiding at a different, a different aspect relating to a fellow who donated and, fell, and failed to buy a bag. So again, let's recap. Ruin donated, failed to buy it back, he went to the Kayhanim, the Kayhanim took it and was Magdish, and Ruben wants to buy it out of Hector. Sure, Gesundheit. He could have it only until Yaival. Loi Goy Lloyd, right? Another case would be he was Magdish, failed to buy it back. He went to the Kayhan, the Kayhan sold it. His buyer was Magdashit. A fellow came and bought it out of Hegdish. Comes here, but goes back to the Kayhan, not to the original owner. Now, back to Rabbi Lezer, right? He told us that Kayhan, ah, they only get it if somebody, somebody came in the middle and took it away from the Hegdish, bought it out of Hegdish, then comes Yevil. He's meant to give up his field. He gives it up to the Kayana. But let's say nobody touched the field. It was sitting in Hegdish proper straight throughout. It just stays there until somebody, right? So what's the conclusion? Where's the source for that? Allah goes to the Kayana. The word Bitsesa tells us that it's, it's, it's time to give it up. As per the Allah of a person who buys a field, who gives it up in Yaival. So when you meant to give it up because Yevil arrived, so the buyer meant to give it up as per a standard halacha of giving up a field by Yevil. In this case, it goes to the Kayan. Clearly, we're speaking that there's a buyer involved. But it says, when it leaves, when it's taken away from the Acher, from the fellow who bought it at the Eredi Hegdish. So then, it goes to the Kayan, but otherwise, it sits and sits until that happens. Return to the case. That comes out. A new Shaila, which really relates to the previous discussion, and as you'll see, it's almost word for word, all the way down to about halfway down the Amit. Word for word. We'll just go through it quickly, because we just learned it in great detail, but it's triggered by a new question, but it will bring about the same discussion with the same scenarios and the same prices. Now comes a new Shaila that was asked. So back to Rabbi Lazar, who says that you know, the, the, we have to wait it out. The Gehanim can't access it until somebody comes and redeems it. So now it's past the first Yevil. It's sitting in the second Yevil, you know, set of years. And lo, lo and behold, the owner, Ruben, comes along to be paid it. So the question is, you know, is he like a stranger, Ka'achadam? In which case, you know, come Yevil, who's going to give it up to the Gehanim? Or a lawyer, maybe not. Maybe he's considered like the original, uh, goes back as a steyachuzah. 
Now, this, this question is only pertinent to Contra Pilaser, who says that the field is awaiting a redeemer. It's waiting and waiting. So maybe the owner still has his options open. And we treat him like an owner for all matters. Just like if you buy back right away, before the first year comes, he gets it back like a stay who stays by him permanently. Perhaps the same applies later on too. Even if it's past the Yevil, because the buyback option is still, uh, is still active, it's still relevant for him. Tashmai comes to Raya. We go through all those braces. Tashmai lo yigoyel. So he fails to redeem it, can no longer do so. Yachal lo yitei yeles. Shtelefanam kstei mikna, perhaps. He cannot buy it back in a limited sense. The owner, right? Tamalayma oid. It can't be restored to its former status. It can't be redeemed the way it was before, Avon Negelis, but it could be redeemed in a limited sense. Stay the stay Mikna to be considered like a stay Mikna and have it until you have it. Amos, at what juncture are we speaking? Elam Bevel Rishon, the first Yevil, am I in Negelis? Why can't I have it back as before? Achuza, Nami, Nami Avi, can take it back as a star and have it uh, sit by him forever. Right? El Abshita, Bevel Shane. Rather, we're speaking that it's already passed first Yevil, it's the second Yevil, and he's coming to buy it back. Now who's speaking? Either Rabbi Yudur of Shimon, going like those sheeters, the Gehanim Nafka, it's already too late, they went to the Gehanim, come be able. El Lav Rabbi Eliezer, must be seen with the coin to Rabbi Eliezer, we can prove from here, that in fact, Bailem be able to shenik yachar domo, that once it's first past the first Yavil, even though it's the original owner coming to redeem, it's too late, you're like a stranger, you can have it until Yavil, and only that. You can't have it permanently. It is, but how could you suggest this uh, explanation? Rabbi Yudur of Shimon, Ayad Medar Shibay, it's based on the extra word oid, and uh, what are the other opinions going to use the word oid for? Allah my skin must be speaking about a case which addresses all opinions, which is consistent even, even with the other opinions as well. We're speaking about the Kayanam. Kayanam, what happened was that Ruben donated and ultimately went to the Kayanam by Yoival. The Kayan was Magdish, the owner. Mr. Ruben comes to buy it back. So I mean, there's room to think. Let's break. Perhaps he can't redeem it even on a limited sense. Tamalama oid. Oh, he tells you, look, Moshe, he if Gelas, it can be redeemed to re- restore it as a Sechuza, to have it, you know, permanently. Not forever, nothing's forever, but permanently, right? Avon the Gelas, Tehle Fanum, Stay Miknem, they could have it, just like uh, a person who redeems a Stay Miknem, could have it until Yav. Yeah, Tanya, likewise, we find a, a similar discussion in the following Brysa. Yoshev Hasoda, Ashokonomi Ito, we're speaking about a stay mikna in this case, a person had bought a field, it's not really his from way back, it's a purchased field, and he was Magdish, and somebody came and took it out of the Hagdish. So comes, uh, um, you know, Yoival, who does it go back to? To the Gizber, who you bought it from, or to the original um, owner? Yoshev Hasoda, Ashokonomi Ito, Yochel, Yachel, Gizber, perhaps it goes to the administrator, the Shilkachemen, who you bought it from. The most recent transaction was from the Gizber, no, no, no. It goes back to the actual original owner because the Hegdish took place after it was bought from him, so it's a limited Hegdish. Okay, that's a standard case, but what's the added Lushen in the Pusik? Repetition. So why does the Pusik mention something about giving it back to the person you bought it from? It's a repetition. The answer is like this. That's also addressing a different case, a more complicated case. Where the Kayan was involved, so the Shatzla kind of be Yaiva. What happened was Ruben donated it. Kamyevil was given to the Kayana, Marcha Kayan, the Kayan sold it. So he's entitled to have it back, Kamyevil. But what happened was the person who bought it from him was Magdashit. And then it was redeemed. Ultimately, it goes back to the Kayan at Yevil. And the buyer was Magdashit. Another person came and redeemed it from the Hegdash. Yachal, Tachshul, Valmer Shem. So now Kamyevil. Who's it go back to? Ruven, the original donor? No. It reverts back to the Kayan, who's considered the new owner, the new owner on title. So we have this pasuk, we have the previous pasuk, which highlight the same point that once it gets to Kayhanim, it transitions. He becomes the new owner on title. Why the uh, redundancy, the two psukim, which are pretty much teaching us the same concept that the Kayan becomes sort of the new owner because Rahman al Yigoyl, if only from the first pasuk, I would say like Adra Klal there, it's not meant to go back, it's not on its way back to anybody. It's just that the uh, do- fellow donated the field, it's now by the Kayan. Who was Magdashit? So, you know, he's um, the, the original owner has having, you know, nostalgic feelings. He wants to buy it back. So, there really, it's not intended. It's not really going back. Right? Uh, Rashi explained before because the, uh, the Kayin becomes the new owner. 
And once he was Magdash, it, that's it. He gives it up. It's not really intended to go back to him. So, you know, so likewise, if the original owner comes to buy it back, that's it. He has it until Yevel. Yeah, it's not going to revert to his ownership. But in the next example, uh, where there's a Gers Aval Hacha, the Kahadra, the Adlam Arakama, which is similar to the language we have in Aleph, but in the second example, where it is going back. It's going back to the Kayin, who got it, who then sold it, and then, right? So it's anyways on its way back to an owner, so perhaps go back to the uh, original owner, to Ruben, because Rahmana, Lasha no, no. It returns to the one you bought it from, the Kayin, he's the new owner on title. Because Rahmana, Lasha no. On the other end, the Pasuk only highlighted this case, like Yavid Balanjmei, was speaking of the original owner, Ruben, is not offering money, Avlacha, the Yavid Balanjmei, but in our case, where Ruben was Magdish, then it was given to Kayan, back to the Hegdish, Ruben comes back to redeem it, he's paying, he's offering for it. So maybe uh, we should give it back to him, but take him uh, by a die, give it back to him completely, because Rahman let you go, oh, you have it until Yevil, that's it. And then finally, why the word Oid, what that coming to teach, because Rahman let you go, it's only the word let you go, because Oid without the word Oid, I mean, I would say, too late, let different cloud, you can't redeem it at all, you lost your chance, because Rahman Oid, which tells you, my choice, and Gelas, it can't be returned to its former status, to have it as a family plot, for all time, Aval Negelas, but you could redeem it in a limited sense, no worse than anybody else. The final statement you can have until you. Okay, so we started with a question which triggered this whole conversation. Quite a lesser. It stays in the hands of Hegish until somebody redeems it. Let's say the owner comes later on after the able to redeem it. Does he have special uh, privileged character uh, status? He can have it back as a family plot for all time, or is he just like a stranger now? Once the evil passes, like anybody else, he's disconnected from the field, he's off title, he's like a stranger, he can have it until you have it. Allah, what's the conclusion on that question? Okay, Toshma. Here's a right. Rabbi Lezer. Oh, Rabbi Lezer Oimer. Rabbi Lezer tells us, Go sheni. If Ruben, the owner, buys it back from Hegdish, past the first Yevil, right, during the second Yevil, Yoitza, look at Yehanam that's your answer. It's like anybody else. You can have it until Yavu. And then he has to give it up. Oh, my little, you know, Rashi. What do you mean? I'm not like Tan Hachi. In our mission, it seems otherwise. Rabbi Lezo Aimer. Rabbi Lezo says, Kiyanam only have access if somebody redeems. Somebody else. Acher, a stranger. Apparently, if the owner redeemed it, he keeps it. Oh, my he says, Yeah, the, the wording. Have to be tweaked, meaning has to be tweaked, meaning it's true. But but uh, who does Akhar mean? Perhaps the owner is not considered an Akhar as well. It's all a matter of context. Once Yevil passes by, the original owner is no longer the owner. He's also an Akhar. Unbelievable. Bible at this Balim, the owner at this late stage in the game, he's really off title. Akhar Dami is like Akhar Dami, is like anybody else. In which case, if he buys it back, he only keeps it until Yevil. Ikadami, there's a different version of Lezo Eimer. The price actually says the other way. Lezo says, even if the owner comes along at this late stage in the game, he will not go to the Kanam, he keeps it as a regular stay. I'm living in Rashi. I can support that point from the Mishnah. We find that now Mishnah as well. Lezo Eimer, when the Kohanim access it, only if a stranger was involved, but not the owner. The owner's involved, it gets back to him. Only if a stranger came and redeemed it. Apparently, owner buys it back and keeps it. Amalei says, no, it wouldn't be so clear from the Mishnah what the Mishnah means. Because like we said, maybe in this context, the owner is called an Achar. Amalei, if only from the Mishnah, without that additional, you know, confirmation from the Brisa, I could say, Balam be able to that at this late stage in the process, the Balim, the original donor, is treated like anybody else. Kamashman comes to Bryce and says, no. No. He still consents the owner, still has that special status, in which case if he comes to redeem it, it's his. And stays by him. Okay, so we covered uh, basically Rebbe Leza's Shita today. Um, before we continue in the next studio, we have Rebbe Leza's Shita, uh, Reuben was Magdish. Come Yevil, nobody touched it. It stays. It stays in Hegdish. 
proper until somebody redeems it. If the witcher goes to the Kayanim in the following Yevon. We had the, the, uh, the source of Amarava, the Quran, that says about Yevil, indicates that there's somebody holding it, about to give it up on Yevil. Then it goes to the Kayanim. But otherwise, if it's still stationary, it's still sitting where it was by Hegdish, it will not go to the Kayanim. Now the question was, fine, let's say the owner comes back the second Yevil around, and the, you know after the first Yevil, the second set of years, and wants to redeem it. Can you have it back as before? Actually, there was a machlek, it's two uh, girsas in the Gemara. Some say that uh, it's too late for him to do that, he can have it until you have it, that's it. And some say no, he still retains that owner status. If he buys it back, it's by him for all time. Continues the uh, mission. So, we discussed primarily Steachus, a family plot, family, you know, estate that was donated, which runs this whole track. You can be paid it. Uh, based on the, you know, standard, you know, fixed rate, 50 seller per base, Chaymer Soirim. Um, if somebody uh, bought it from you and he was Magdashit, it goes back to the Kam Hegdish, goes back to the Kam Yevil, goes back to the original owner. So we have all these halachis that relate to a study, a study Echus. Well, let's say it's a study Mikna, something which you bought. It's a whole different system. It's not fuel Magdashit, it's bought back based on actual market value, not based on the fixed rate. And again, the Hegdash is only a limited Hegdash until, uh, until Yev. Versus a uh, person who's Magdash is the Echuza. If he failed to buy it back, that was still Kayana. So each one has its own system, its own rules. Now let's say it's a hybrid property. It has an element of a Sadi Echuza, but also a Sadi Mikna. How do we treat that? For example, says the Mishnah, the Kayach Sadi Meyav. Shimon bought his father's property, something which eventually he would have inherited. It would have been a steachuza, but he, he bought it during father's lifetime. So technically, technically now it's a Sadi Mikna. But it has potential to be a steachuza. So how do we treat it? Actually, the father passed away, and then the, the son. So again, he had it as a, he acquired it as a Mikna, but now it's sort of reverted to steachuza, becomes his family plot. And then he gave it away to Hegdish in this state. So what system does it follow? Is it on the Saudi Mikna track? That's the way he acquired possession on this field? Or is it on the Saudi Achuza track, which was its status at the time of Hegdish? The answer is Saudi Achuza, for sure. Harik is Saudi Achuza. But let's say. He bought it as a Sadi Mikna. And then Hegdish, he gave it away to Hegdish in that state. So it became Hegdish as a Sadi Achuza. But then, before he had a chance to do anything, it became his Sadi Achuza. Father passed away. In this case, Ramir says, the moment of Hegdish is what defines its status. And it was a Sadi Mikna at that time. Harei Kastei Mikna. Harei Kastei Mikna, Ramir. Rabbi Yudha, Rabbi Shimon, however, disagree. They say, as long as it had the potential to become a steachuza, was slated to become a steachuza, it already has that potential in it, and it's regarded as such. Despite the fact that it was merely a steachuza when he was magdashit. I mean, they say, Arik is steachuza, even in this case, steachuza, shenamar im steim knosa, shaloi mi steachuza. A steimikna is something which is exclusively a mikna without any element of steachuza. Even a potential. Sada Shaina Ru'uyali Sada Khuza, only a Sada which is not anticipated, not slated to be a Stehuza. Yatsuzu as opposed to this field, which although at the time of possession it was a Ste Mikna, but it was meant it was slated to become a Stehuza. She Ru'i Ste Achuza, which case we treated like a Stehuz. Continues the Mishnah. Sade Mikna, okay, a fellow who bought a field from a stranger, and he uh, was Magdashit. So since his entire ownership was a very limited ownership until Yevil, when it goes back to the owner, so even if he's Magdashit, the Hegdash is a limited time Hegdash, in which case comes Yevil, it doesn't go to the Kayanim, it goes back to the uh, seller. And he is still going to be able to say, not the Magdash, for a very simple reason, you can't give away something which is not yours, or past the time that you meant to have it. Shein not the Magdash, you can't be Magdash, Dover, an item, Shein not which is not really fully yours. The mission concludes, so as opposed to a Yisrael who gives away his field, comes Yevil, it's too late to get. But Kahanam Levim 
they can be magdash all the time and be goyal all the time without any time expiration. Ben lef nei yovel ben achayovel. Whether it's before or after yovel, the Gemara explains exactly what this means. Turn around. So back to the hybrid field. Minayin lekech sadu biyav. What do we know about a case? He bought the field from his father, Megdish, and then he gave it away to Hegdish. Ve'achakach meisav. But then father passes away. Minayin shtei lefanav kesteh achuzah. How do we know that it's true like kesteh achuzah? Tamalei ma vimestei meknasa shalem kesteh achuzah. Kesteh mikna, which is not a kesteh achuzah. Sada she'ein ruya. Ruya is the achuzah. The mikna status is only on something which cannot conceivably become a kesteh achuzah. Yotzes as well, as opposed to this field that he bought from his father, which ultimately will become a steachuza. It's meant for that, right? Shiruyel is steachuza. It's expected to be an inheritance. Divir Abidur Reb Shimon, who all that we treated as such, despite the fact that it was merely purchased at the time of the hektish. It wasn't a steachuza yet. Rabbi Yehuda, no, I agree, but in a very limited sense. So if he bought the field, so although he took possession of the mikna. But if he was Magdashit after father's passing, so father passed away, now it's a Steachuzah, then he was Magdashit? Yes, I, I agree. How about a case where he purchased the father's field, so he took possession of the Steachuzah, but then father passed away, now relabeled as a Steachuzah, now he was Magdashit. So in this case, I agree that it's a Steachuzah. But how do we know that he's treated like a Steachuzah? Now the field is considered to him like a Steachuzah. A stemikna which is not an achuza, sada she'en is stechuza. A mikna which is not a stechuza. You have to do as opposed to this case, she's stechuza, which is a stechuza. So according to Rebbe, it's all about the status of the field at the moment of hektish. At that point, it was already stechuza, which treated as such, and this is despite the fact that he, the original taking of possession was as a stemikna. That's irrelevant as long as right now b'shas the hektish it's a stechuza. As opposed to Rabbi Shimon, to stretch it a bit further, they hold that A, even though he took possession of the Stay Mikna, and B, the moment of Hegdish was when it was still a Stay Mikna. Despite, right? Still, since currently, at the time of redemption, Father passed away, it's considered his uh, inheritance, it's a Stay Achus. So, what's the Machlekas based on? Perhaps we can understand the Machlekas as follows. Initially, when he bought the field, it's called Kenyan Paris. You have a, a limited ownership, a limited acquisition. You can use it, but it's not yours for all time. It goes back to the owner, come Yevil. It's called Kenyan Paris. It's usage rights. It's yours. He bought it for usage rights. How deep is your ownership? How in- integral is your bias? Tereir saw a Kenyan Paris, Kenyan Guftami. Tereir says, a purchase field, for all practical purposes, is like you're the owner of the actual field, of the goof, of the principle, of the actual field itself. So you have it for the sake of its parents, but it's considered an element of ownership within the actual field itself. In which case, when he bought it from father, and then father passed away, not much changed. Because he already had ownership in the actual goof, in the body, so to, so to speak, of the property. Although it was just purchased, it was for Paris, but that's considered an element of ownership within the body itself. So now when father passed away, he inherited it. It wasn't much of a drastic change. Then he owned it, now he owned it. So, when the pastor is coming to teach that we're going to apply the status of stechuz even in an unconventional case, it's coming to address this case. Because there wasn't much of a drastic change of status even after father passed away. He had it then, he had it now. He had it then, he has it now. So why would we consider it a stay Why does it change? Why does it get reclassified? If not for the Pasuk. So when the Pasuk is coming to add, it's coming to add this case. Again, he bought the field. He had Kenyan Paris, which is really an element of Kenyan Gulf. Now father passed away. So, yeah, he's now the inheritor, but it wasn't much of a drastic change of status. He had it then, he has it now. And now he was Magdashit, so you would think maybe, you know, we treat it like a stay mikna, because after all, that's how he got it. He got it as a stay mikna. Comes the puzzle and says, no, technically it's yours now as, a, as, as an inheritance, and we treat it like a stay achus. But that's it. The puzzle is coming for that only. We have no right to stretch the puzzle further, because it's needed for this case. This, this in itself is a novelty. Why would we? Could, yeah. 
Rabbi the Rabbi Shimon, however, disagree. They hold that when a person buys a field, which basically gives them rights to the payers, to the crop, to the produce, kingdom payers is not really considered actual ownership of the field itself. So when the son bought it from the father, he only had very limited access, just usage rights. Now when the father passes away, and then he's Magdashid, I mean, that's a huge transformation. He now owns the actual field, of course, as a Steachuza. Of course, no, without, without a Pasek, we would know that if he inherits it, now he's Magdashid, of course, it's a Steachuza. We don't need a Pasek for that. It went through a, went through a, a drastic transformation after father's path. Of course, it's a Steachuza. Rather, the Pasek is coming to address a different case. A case which, in fact, is a novelty. The case that they mentioned, that he bought it, and he was Magdashid as a purchase field, as a state victim. Then father died while the field was in the hands of Hedge. Now he comes to buy it back. Comes to Pasek and says, guess what? Despite the fact that at the moment of Hedge was merely so they make them, but now that we come, when you come in to buy it back, it's already yours and it's his inheritance, which we like to stay Ahuza with all its ramifications. Okay, so that's the Machlekes. So their Machlekes, in terms of classifying the, uh, the, the field that was Sent to Hegdish in this in this manner is really rooted in a prior machlekes. How to define limited ownership on a purchase field? Lema, perhaps we can suggest. But the machlekes is rooted on the following question: The mayor suffer, mayor holds, kinyan pairs, kinyan guf dummy. That the limited pairs ownership is considered like inherent ownership. In which case, when the father died, it's a chiddush to say that it changes statuses, and now we need a pasuk to tell you that it does. Rabbi the Rishon Masavri, Kinyan Peres Lachim of Dami, they hold that limited ownership is not considered actual ownership. In which case, when he was just owning it as a as a buyer, it's a very limited ownership. And then when the father passed away, he's really owning it. So now when he was magdash, it's for sure stay who's without a pasuk. Apparently, the pasuk is coming to address even the other case. Amar. Rav Nachman Yitzchak Alma. No, you don't have to say that. Typically, the Rav Shimon Rav Yudah, even according to them, Kinyan Peres is Kikinyan Guf Dami, like Rav Meir. So we're back to the question: What's the Machlekes about? The answer is they have extra pasuk to address that additional case as well. Vacha, Kra. We turn to the next one. Kra Ashkach Vadoshi. They found a pasuk to address even the second case because. If only to address the basic case of our mayor, again, our mayor's case was he bought it, father passed away, and then he was magdashit. It's a seachus. If only for that, Luther Rahman is the Makrasa Shaloi, Steachuzasai. First Magdash is the Mikta, which is not a Steachuza, so we know that um, that it's uh, coming to rule out this type of Steachuza uh, to, to to consider this a Steachuza. Stay Mikta, which is absolutely not a Steachuza, but if there's an even an element of Steachuza, such as the basic case of Ramir, it's considered Steachuza. So for that, it just has to say Steachuza, not Miste, the extra mem. Is that Inami or Ashaloi Steachuza? It's another way of saying it. My Mi Steachuza, why that emphasis? Mi Steachuza, to teach us that there's just any element, any aspect of Steachuza, even the more advanced case, which sounds like a stretch. No, even that's classified as Steachuza. So the Shein Rulah Steachuza. As the Mikna is one which is a mikna only, without potential to be a chuzza. Reuven sold a field to Shimon, plain and simple, that's a stay mikna, which can't become a stay a chuzza. as opposed to our story with a son and a father, sheru oil is a chuzza, even though he bought it and maldished it in that state before father died, but it has potential to become a stay a upon father's death. The Pasuk is covering that as well, considering that as Teachus. With all its ramifications. Okay, let's recap today's stuff. We discussed a fellow with Magdash as Teachusa. Come Yoival, what happens? We have Rabbi Yudha, Rabbi Shimon, Kehanim get it, free of charge, with charge. We have Rabbi who says, no, Kehanim only get it if somebody came and redeemed it, and then leaves his hands. Yoival goes to the Kehanim. We have a Pasuk for that. And we had a discussion regarding, you know, the next uh, opportunity after the first Yevil, Contra Blazer, the owner decided to take advantage. And we point to, what happens then? Does he get it back completely? Only in limited sense. We have a Machlekes, two Gersas in the Gemara on that. We had another interesting discussion regarding a disconnected field. So the owner wants it back, but it's too late. It was already given to Kayhanim. Pazka's teaching 
different you know uh, scenarios here that yeah it's disconnected the uh, original owners of title lost his chance once it was given to Kahanim, the Kahan the Kahan sort of assumes the new uh, uh, is assumed as a new owner he's on title and now the original owner is no longer uh, you know a pri- privileged character like anybody else and uh, can redeem it in accordance with the uh, standard rules you can have it until Yehovah like anybody else a son who bought a field from a father so if he bought it and uh, father passed away and then he was Magdish all agreed to stay Achuza but if he was Magdish and then father passed away but Machlech is according to Reb Meretz and Sadi Mikna whereas according to Reb Shimon that too is considered a stay Achuza okay all the best to you and Tzlach Rabba